آؤز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ یسٹی وی ہیو سین دی سٹرکچر اینڈ ڈیولوپمنٹ آف اینتھر اور مایکرو سپورنجا ٹوڈی وی ویل ٹیک اپ دی فردر ڈیولوپمنٹ آف پولن سیکس اور مایکرو سپورنجا ایز وی ہیو سین دیٹ دی ڈیولوپمنٹ آف دیس پولن سیکس بگنز with the differentiation of some hypodermal cells hypodermal cells in all the four corners in all the four corners of an anther or in all the four pollen sacs or microsporangia of an anther how this takes place this takes place by the differentiation of some hypodermal cells from other cells due to their large size dense cytoplasm radial elongation and conspicuous nucleus these hypodermal cells constitute archosporium and these archosporial initials they undergo pericolinal division the pericolinal undergo pericolinal division to produce an outer primary parietal cell and inner primary sporogenous cell this outer primary parietal cell then undergo successive anticolinal and pericolinal divisions to produce the wall of the anther and in the primary parietal layer or cell it undergoes successive pericolinal and anticolinal divisions anticolinal divisions to produce a multi-layered wall of anther wall of the anther while as the inner primary sporogenous cell it undergoes it first further divides to produce a mass of tissue that is called megaspore mothers that is called sporogenous tissue which is made up of large number of microspore mother cells or pollen mother cells now first we will take up the anther wall anther wall now the development of this so pollen sex or microsporia has two aspects that is development of the wall of the anther and development of sporogenous tissue so first we take up the development of anther wall as we have seen that the primary parietal cell or primary parietal layer it undergoes successive anticolinal and pericolinal divisions to produce wall of the multi-layered wall of the anther this wall of the anther is generally divided into four layers it generally consists of four layers and it has been further divided into four layers the epidermis endodermis endothecium endothecium middle layers and tapetum and in this wall of the anther it is multi layered it has been divided or it is comprised of it consists of four layers epidermis endothecium middle layers and tapetum now we will take up the first that is epidermis this epidermis it is the outermost outermost single layer of cells single layer of cells and it is the outermost layer of cells outermost layer of anther wall which is comprised of which is comprised of a single layer of cells that is which is one cell in thickness which is one cell in thickness it is one cell in thickness and epidermis is the outermost layer of the anther wall and it is only one cell in thickness number second that is endothecium endothecium this is the 
layer which is situated just below the epidermis that is the single layer of these cells which is the second layer of the which constitutes the second layer of the anther and which is just below the epidermis which is just below the epidermis it is also a single layer of cells it is also a single layer of cells or a layer of cell which is single cell in thickness but here the single layer of cells is these cells are radially elongated and it is made up of a single layer of cells a single layer of radially elongated cells radially elongated cells then in the cells which are elongated along the radius radially elongated these cells are characterized by the presence of fibrous thickenings these cells of the cells of the endothelium they are characterized by the presence of fibrous thickenings which help in dehiscence of anther dehiscence of anther when when anther matures it dehiscences it breaks to release out the pollen grains this dehiscence of the anther this takes place with the help of these fibrous thickenings which are found in the endothelium which are found in the endothelium the groove between the groove between two anther pollen sacs the groove between two pollen sacs it is thin it is generally thin Now the groove between two pollen sacs it is generally thin walled this groove this groove is called stomium this is called stomium s t o m i u m stomium and this stomium actually this stomium helps in the dehiscence of anther and at the time of maturity <clears throat> when anther dries up it matures it breaks due to the contraction of the endothelial cells due to the presence of these fibrous thickenings and it opens it breaks at the stomium because stomium is thin it is thin when endothelial cells contract it open it breaks at the stomium this thus pollen grains come out through this stomium pollen grains come out through this stomium that is we can say endothelium helps in the dehiscence of the anther due to the presence of fibrous thickenings in it and also due to the presence of thin this walled portion between the two lobes that is called stomium number third that is middle layers middle layers two to four layers of cells two to four layers of thin walled cells just below the epithelium endothelium just below the endothelium they are called as they are known as middle layers in two to four layers of thin walled cells just below the endothelium are known as middle layers these layers generally degenerate these layers generally degenerate these layers generally degenerate in the mature anther and when the mature anther when the anther matures these layers degenerate and provide nourishment nourishment that is food to the developing sporogenous tissue to the developing sporogenous tissue or spor mother cells any middle layers have no special function they are two to four layers in thickness just in inner to the endothelium but but these layers they degenerate at maturity and just provide the nutrition food to the developing sporogenous tissue to the developing spore mother cells but the fourth and the innermost layer is that is tapetum tapetum is the innermost layer of anther wall any innermost layer of anther wall is called 
tapetum is called tapetum the cells of this tapetum are generally multinucleate they are generally multinucleate and provide nutrition to the developing sporogenous cells are to the developing micro spores to the developing micro spores and they are the cells of this tapetum are multinucleate and polyploid and provide nutrition to the developing microspores this tapetum it may be it is of two types it may be amoeboid it may be amoeboid that is also called plasmodial type plasmodial type or it may be secretory that is glandular type glandular type and we can say that this tapetum is of two types it may be amoebide or uh, which we also call as plasmodial type or secretory type which is also called glandular type this plasmodial type is generally found in lower plants and glandular type is generally found in higher plants this tapetum performs a number of functions this tapetum performs a number of functions number first it provides nourishment it provides nourishment to the sporogenous cells sporogenous cells and first function of it is provides nourishment to the sporogenous cells number second it brings secretion of enzymes it brings about secretion of enzymes and hormones for example iaa endolytic acid for pollen development pollen development and in this tapetum it brings about the secretion of various enzymes and hormones for example iaa for pollen development number third it brings about the production of ub bodies special bodies which we call as ub bodies which are coated with sporopollenin sporopollenin and this causes to cause the thickening of axine thickening of axine of the pollen grain or of the microspore the microspore it has two layers inner intine and outer axine this it is the tapetum which brings about the production of special structures called ubij bodies which are coated with sporopollenin and which help in thickening the pollen this pollen wall outer pollen wall that is axine number 4 is it provides a yellow oily and sticky structure sticky substance called pollen kit in insect pollinated flowers and in insect pollinated for we have a special kit we have a special outer covering which is generally yellow oily and sticky which attracts the insects from from long distances this is called pollen kit and this pollen kit is also provided by this tapetum and this tapetum it also provide us it also provide special proteins special proteins for pollen compatibility any which makes the pollen grains compatible that is a particular pollen grain can pollinate only a particular stigma and these these special proteins which provide it pollen compatibility this is also produced by the tapetum in addition to this the last function is that it helps in transport of materials inside the anther transport of materials inside the anther they are also um, controlled by the tapetum and it helps in the transport of materials inside the anther it also helps in the transport of materials inside the anther this is the pollen wall and we have seen the pollen wall is multilayered which is produced by the successive anticline and pericline divisions of the primary parietal cells or primary parietal layer it produces multilayered these layers have been further divided into four layers outer outermost single layered 
after after this the second layer that is also single layer that is called endothelium which is characterized by the presence of fibrous thickenings and the presence of thin portion that is stomium which help in the dehiscence of anther after this third layer that is middle layers two to four layers of cells which generally degenerate at maturity and provide nutrition to the developing um, developing microspores and the last layer that is tapetum which is the innermost and the most important layer of the anther wall it is cells are multinucleate and provide nutrition to the developed microspores this tapetum is of two types amoebaid also known as plasmodial type and secretory type or glandular type tapetum performs a number of functions uh, which are as follows number first it provides nourishment to the sporogenous cells number second it brings about secretion of enzymes and hormones for example ia for pollen development number third it brings about the production of ubh bodies which are coated with the sporopollenin to cause the thickening of the exine number fourth it provides the yellow oily and sticky substance po called pollen kit in insect pollinator flowers number fifth it also uh, provides special proteins for pollen compatibility and number six is it helps in the transport of materials inside the anther this is all about anther wall thank you